All right, so let's look at what actually happens when your application starts. This is, you know, whenever you run anything, it's this question of like, what code is executing and, and how does it get there and what's the flow is one way of thinking about it. And with Android, this can be particularly complex because um, a lot of the classes that are being used by your application are actually being created by Android itself, not by you. Um, and that can make things a little bit confusing. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually run the app. So I'm, I'm running the app, I'm running it in the emulator, and let's see what it does, uh, just sort of uh, initially on startup. And is my emulator off? Yeah, it is. Uh, okay. Uh, so we're gonna run, um, we're gonna run my, um, you know, the, the starter code for the app. So I'm building that, it's installing, uh, and then once it starts up, we're gonna see, okay, so here's what's shown. Um, so this is what the app currently does. It displays a list of numbers now, it's going to turn out that these numbers correspond to courses in the CS department, but it's hard to tell right now because the app's UI is not very good. Um, the goal of this application is to allow you to browse, uh, find information about, and eventually rate courses. Uh, we're going to get there in a series of steps over the next uh, few months. Um, but so, so this is what it does right now. You also see the other thing that, that's weird is that uh, the, the search doesn't seem to do anything. And so we've got some issues to, to figure out here. Let me show you the starting point. Um, so when Android uh, starts up your app, so I've, I've opened up the app folder and I'll close some of these other things. Um, and I wanna highlight two files here. The first one is this Courseable application. So this is Java code, um, it's a Java class, but this is one of the classes that's created by Android. So when you create an Android application, if you define this class and you tell Android where to find it, Android will create an instance of this class whenever your application starts up. And this class will always be available throughout the lifetime of your app. That's different than another class that we're about to see. So this is, um, you know, this is extending something that's part of Android. So if we look at, uh, Android.app.application, it's extending Android.app.application. Um, I have some constants that we set up here. Um, and then this piece of code does a couple of things. It starts our client and our server, the networking components of the app that we'll talk about in a later, uh, a later screencast. Um, and then it has what is essentially a getter for the course client that returns a reference to the client that it creates. Um, now, because this class persist throughout the lifetime of my application. I don't have to worry about these things being created multiple times. Oh, I should also point out uh, this on create method. So this method is, I, you see I'm overriding. This is provided by my super class, in this case by the application class. This method gets called when the app's created um, or when, it, when your app first starts up. So this is one of the classes created by Android that gets called uh, on application startup. Um, the other class created by Android that gets called on application startup, and we're gonna talk more about the contents of these in, in future uh, screencasts. I'm just kind of giving you the lay of the land here. Um, the second one is this class called uh, an activity. Activities in Android correspond to screens. You can think of, on some level, every screen having its own activity. The screen that launches when the app starts uh, corresponds in our code to main activity. This is another class that's created by Android. If you look online through the Android documentation, there's a whole series of methods that get called in a particular order that are sometimes known as the activity lifecycle. So when the activity starts, there's this on create method, then an on start and on resume, and then when it uh, when you hide it, there's an on pause and other things. Um, the only one of these that we're uh, worried about here is this on create. This method gets called every time our app starts up. Sorry, every time that activity in our app is shown. So let's actually uh, go ahead and and that let's let's verify this. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to put some logging into this. Um, in Android, you can use system.out.println, and that'll show up in the logs, uh, but the right way to do this is to use this built-in logging feature in Android. If I tab, I'll get android.log. And then there are different levels. So logging, some messages are really important to log, others are less important. I'm gonna log this as I, which is info. There are two things I need to give it a tag, 
which helps organize the log messages in a way that we'll see in a minute, and then a message. Uh, and I'll say on create in application. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll use the full name. This is a courseable application. Great. Okay, so I have a log message there. And then I'm going to put a similar log message in that main activity in the same place in the onCreate method right after the call to super. Now I'll say uh, main activity. All right, I'm going to restart my, uh, my app in the emulator. And then I also need to grab the log. So I go down here and I click on the log cat tab. And now that's going to initialize things. And there's quite a bit of stuff that's going to get printed initially. Um, let's see here. Let me see if I can just get the, okay, here we go. Um, and so you'll see, um, and, and now the, the cool thing about using these tags is we can actually search for them. Um, and so we see, and I'll, I'll put this on I, we see a log message that was, so the, the first thing that happened was this on create message in the course ball application, and then the on create message in the main activity. So now let's try something. Let's like, like close this, and then let's reopen it from the, the tabs. And we'll see that on create doesn't get called again. Um, let's try like closing this like this, closing this. Let's reopen it from the menu. Uh, so I'm going to go back in here. Uh, here's my courseable application. And you'll see uh, now both of them get called again. Uh, so when I actually forcibly close the application, both of these get called. Let's try rotating the app. Uh, okay, so on create does not get called in main activity. It looks like this actually doesn't respond to screen rotation at all. Um, okay, so, and this is the code that, so this is the entry point is sometimes referred. This is the code that gets run initially. One of the things I wanna show you, uh, even though uh, you, your interaction with this is limited, is you might ask like, how does Android know this? So there's a file in your project that's called the manifest. You'll see it's down here if you use the project view, which is what I'm using. Um, it's below resources, it's called androidmanifest.xml. This is, a file in something called XML. Remember JSON, sort of a, a format for was 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 uh, rules about how to format data. XML is similar, but it's a different set of rules um, about how to format objects. And the information here is used by Android to figure out certain things about your, uh, about your app. So, for example, here's the name of our application. You'll see that there's this application tag in my XML, and one of its properties, Android colon name, is the full path. Um, uh, including the package name to the app, the Courseable application class. Uh, that's the full name of it. Uh, it also, I, I can provide a label. So that label is used, uh, you know, down here when I open up the menu. That's why it's called Courseable in the menu. Um, and then activities are also, um, are also included in the manifest. So this is the path to my activity class. And you'll notice that I've uh, set it up as the main activity and also uh, in the category of launcher. So what this means is that whenever somebody starts my app, that's the first screen that they're gonna arrive at. That's the main activity that's gonna get launched. In a future checkpoint, we're gonna create another activity um, and you'll get a little bit of uh, practice not only creating your own activity class, but at modifying this manifest file a little bit. So that'll be fun. Um, so anyway, this is what happens on start. This is how Android knows uh, what to do. Uh, so the first thing that happens is it creates an instance of this courseable application class and it calls a series of methods, one of which I've overwritten that's called onCreate, and I'm using it to do a little bit of, of work here uh, on startup. And then the second thing that happens is because I've told it that main activity is the launcher activity. It's the main activity in my class. It's the one that should be shown when somebody enters the application, that activity gets created and it's on create method gets called. Now I know there's a lot in here that won't make sense yet. Um, we'll go through some additional walkthroughs to give you a sense of what these other pieces of the app are and what they're doing.